We started making black gold because at the end of 2002, the Ethiopian government announced that the country was going to face another food crisis like they had 20 years ago. This time, however, coffee farmers were being caught up in this crisis. And these people bear in mind are the backbone of the Ethiopian economy and they are known for producing some of the most amazing coffee in the whole world and yet they were ripping up their coffee trees and being dependent on food aid from the European Union and America and so on. How could this be? And how can we as filmmakers start to tell a story which makes what's happening in Africa relevant to our everyday lives? They are picking coffee. The workers here are getting four per and fifty cents, which is less than half a dollar a day. They work eight hours, full eight hours, and they are getting half a dollar a day. So I'll take this cup of coffee. Maybe this is two, two euros. A farmer's getting about two cents from that cup of coffee. And when we started making this film, the price being paid to coffee farmers was at an all-time low. They were being paid less now than they were 30 years ago. And whilst at the same time, these huge corporations were earning more than they ever have done before. The price is being established here, and most people in the world uh, who get involved in the coffee industry pay attention to this price every day. I think the reason why the big companies didn't want to be interviewed is perhaps nothing we can explain. I mean, they all decline for different reasons. I think the question it raises is, why is it that some of these companies who have far more influence and power than many governments in the world, why are they not wanting to engage? That's the question, why? And there's a big call at the moment on behalf of consumer organizations for these companies to be more transparent. Consumers want to know where the profits go. When you buy a three dollar cup of coffee or a three euro cup of coffee, how much of that goes back to the coffee farmer? And these companies, time and time and time again, don't want to tell us that. Here is our coffee here, Mokasi, Mokasi Damo. Our hope is one day the consumer would understand what he's drinking. The consumers can bring a change if awareness given to consumers to ask for more of a trade product. There is a way to operate in the international market, but not at the expense of the workers in the countries like Ethiopia and the rest of Africa. That's one response. Shareholder power. Other people are asking their coffee shops to stock more fair trade coffee, which is a start. It's not a solution, but it's certainly a start. And it's important that when we talk about this, that it's the really big players like Nestle, Kraft and so on, who can actually change the industry overnight, but it's, they'll only do that if a pressure is put on them. And they themselves have told us that. They say, we will not lead, we'll follow, and we'll follow if consumers put pressure on us. But we could have made this film about cotton, about diamonds, about rubber, about oil, around you know, any commodity that's coming from you know, Africa. This is a continent that's so rich, yet it's been plundered and exploited for centuries. But the question is, and I, I quote from the main character in our film, he says, if awareness is given to consumers, then there can be some you know, uh, opportunity for change. They'll think twice when they have a...